But um, I think we're getting close on timelines for everyone because uh, we had so many technical difficulties setting up. But I want to finish this one. Do you guys have one tip or suggestion you give to players that one you found useful or you think might bring people more enjoyment in the game? Like I said, my big one is level different units. Yes, look, look at what people recommend for talents, but read them yourselves and come up with stuff because the game has so many varied ways to play it that different talents on different characters, depending on who you're teaming them up with, can be a massive difference. It's kind of like when you look at general recommendations of pick this character's basic attack that has a dispel because there's a lot of buffs to dispel, but if you've already got two other characters with that ability in, in your team, well, maybe you bring the other one and you've got something to do. So I, I just think exploring the game and building up other characters is just like the best thing you can do for enjoyment and also to help you progress. Uh, so I would say focus on learning the core mechanics of the game. The game does a decent job of explaining a lot of it, but there's a lot that I actually think you either need to experience yourself or you need to ask questions. Like, did you know if an enemy has physical shield, they're immune to move down abilities, effects being put on them? I didn't know that. I All literally it says didn't is know that until you just said it. Yeah, th there's a there's a one line of text in the game that says if an enemy has physical shield, they are immune to some debuffs. That's all the context. They, what debuffs apparently moved down, I found after having to use a bunch of I'm like, why is this guy not getting slowed? Why is he not getting slowed? Also, and like you said, with the fire attack, the ice attack, the ice attack leaves a bunch of ice everywhere when you use an I AOE ice attack. The thing is, the fire attack does the same. However, it only does it on tiles that can be burning without a special ability that bypasses that. So, like, if you use an AoE fire attack on a bunch of grass, it will all burn as if you used an ice attack there in the same way. But if you read, like, gravel, it's immune to burning. But abilities that specifically say it'll catch a tile on fire will burn it, even if it says immune to burning. There's a lot of stuff like that. Also, <laughs> last thing, there's an ability that sounds bad. It's like, this character heals 5% life, when a character dies in combat or something. It's called like Resolve. It's like one time per combat heals 5% HP when a character dies. That's like, it, not verbatim, but that's almost what it says. It reads, it it reads is, is one time per battle. It, that's how it reads. Yes, but what it actually does is when this character takes fatal damage, they self-revive at 5% HP. Way better ability than the nonsense yeah. that when you read it, you know? So uh, don't be afraid to ask questions. Look into the mechanics. Don't assume you know how these things work because there's a lot of nuances that aren't apparent and super clear uh, up front. Definitely. Pl play the game. Get get destroyed because you don't understand something <laughs> and then you'll learn to understand it. Because <laughs> like, a lot of these things you're not going to find out until it doesn't work and you're like, why doesn't it work? Checking these guys' videos out as well and looking for tips is super helpful for that. How about you, Aaron? So, okay, I guess like my advice would be, and this would be kind of just general gotcha advice, is anytime you're playing a gotcha game, like don't let the gotcha mechanic be your favorite thing or your least favorite thing about the game. Just like know it's part of the game and you're going to like, you're gonna roll on it. And especially in a game like this, like it's going to give you something. You're gonna get something. And just take what, take that something and be like, this is my account. And then go, go like, go enjoy that. And I, I think this is a game I've played where you can lean into that more than about anything else because there's almost no useless characters in this game. And so any new thing that you get, you could go learn it and actually have a good time with it if you don't want to spend a whole bunch of money. If you want to spend a whole bunch of money, you, you, the world's your oyster, you know, whether you're playing gotcha games or going to Target. But like, um, yeah, that, that, that's my thing. And that, that's, I try to take that with me from game to game. So I, I definitely agree with that. And, and the big one on that is like how many of these lower rarity units are good. It's like, just think about that with all these low rarity units. And then you've got all these other legendary units, which are more unique, give your account more of an identity because, you know, everyone's got glory by this stage. Most people have either Beryl or Cole, but then all those other units, they're fun units that you can make strategies yeah. that other people don't get to play with. And I think that's the cool thing about this game is, yes, even though they may not be tier zero on a tier list, they're still cool characters and you can still make them work and they can still be a hell of a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. That's like uh, like my favorite character on my Taiwanese playthrough uh, was, what's her face? What's the sniper chick? I've forgotten her name. Nungal. 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 
she she was so so oh, fun God. and i i just loved playing as her and and she was a great character in general but yeah like whoever you whoever you pull just because they're a low tier unit definitely give them a crack mm -hmm. how about you show tom yeah, I would say two things. Um, figure out what is fun for you. What's fun for you might not be fun for the majority of players out there. So if you're really into the single player experience, yeah, Spiral's there for you. You could reset it a couple times and maybe roll something that it's a unique playthrough. Like, oh, I'm going to run all Papel units and see how they do when they're doing the Papel state missions or whatever it is. You can role play if you're into waifus. Just figure out what that is. Don't be super concerned about the meta because the meta got blown up pretty amazingly so far as far as the cheese units. Like we said, like a week and a half ago, a lot of us had no idea that like Bandit Archer and Papel Ice Priest were going to be carrying us into the later parts of the tower, let alone all types of farming dungeons and stuff like that. So figure out what works for you. You can be creative about it. Take some time to sit down and actually read the skills. And if you don't understand the skill, we got a whole community here. Obviously, the gentlemen that are all on this panel will help you. And even if it's just we don't make a video on it, but you ask questions, we'll respond. Yeah, you can come to our live streams. Yep. You can come to the comments. You can come in our discords, etc. Yep. And yeah, just enjoy the game. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel like you have to have every meta unit. Don't feel like, oh, no, I don't have enough currency. Just have fun. That's the number one thing you're supposed to do with a video game. Yeah, see, and now as I look at every unit and I look at their like, tiering on the CN Taiwanese tier list, I'm reading through every character very carefully and thinking how they will function in PvP. And that's what I'm going to base my personal pulling decisions on because the PvE, if a, if a character's tier 0 or tier 0.5 or tier, tier 1, you're still going to clear the PvE. And mm -hmm. PvP is where if they do go lean more heavily into the uh, the real time arena, which I would love, that's where I want my units to be pulled for. Whereas a lot of the tier lists are based on max level PvE content. So just keep that in mind when you look at that stuff. Pick stuff you think you'll enjoy in the content you want to enjoy. And, and that's probably just like tailing off of uh, Showtime's point there. But is there any other final things you guys want to do before we wrap this up? I mean, I would I've just been, add to Showtime's to point that even looking at those like, you know, tier lists that are seven, eight months ahead of ours, there's launch characters in tier zero still. Mm -hmm. And there's new characters that are in like not the top tier. Mm -hmm. So they didn't do the thing that games do where they're like, hey, guess what? In two months, we are releasing literal God. And then two months <laughs> later, we're releasing literal God's dad. And then <laughs> God's you know, grandpa. Do so if you if you have units now that you like, you can ride them for a while, and that's really nice.